up guys main trick here with the next let's make with RPG maker VX ace and this one will be making events um, overall here's my idea um, you're going to the walkway up to the castle sit town I just call it castle town for now and you come walking in and it brings you to this other map at first you're gonna be brought to the assault map where the city is under assault by various monsters. City guard are attacking the monsters back, but they're being overwhelmed. Well, you come in from behind, luckily for them, and you kill them, you get a reward. So, let's get wor I'm working on that. Um, over in Port Town, I'm still working on this. This one's turning a lot more work than I anticipated. So I'm not going to be working on this one for now, but I do want to check um, how far the story event variable is going so far. And let's say it will be 12 by the time of this event. Um, what that variable is, is this variable right here. It tells the system how far the player is along in the main storyline. In this example right here, um, in this portion, he's 10 steps inside. So if you go back to the very beginning, back in the village, like I sort the farmer's hut, talk to the farmer, he brings it up by 2 1. And then other events happen, you get your dog that brings up one more, you get your sister in the party that adds one more, and so on and so forth. As things happen, it increments. And that's how that goes on. So. Assuming it's going to be 12 by the time you get here. I don't want the player entering this area until he reaches that part. So, I'm going to create a variable. The variable's condition is it must be 12 or above. Simple as that. Otherwise, otherwise it won't work. So, let's do this. The What happens if he's not meeting that condition? Let's just have a show text. Mm. Something generic like that. We should probably check out more Tagolis. Um, sorry, I don't. I can't type when I talk. So if I'm quiet for a second, that's why. And it's gonna be the main character, Damon, saying that. So let's go down to his pictures neutral. That'll work. Show picture. I bring his Y down to t by ten. Remember the top left of the game map is zero zero as you go down that's actually positive increments to the right is increments to the right this goes moves over to the right this moves down as you go up and then as you go to negatives you move the value up so that's how the corner system works and it's by pixel when it's show picture it's by pixel and always remember to erase by the picture number otherwise it just won't work Player touch, say next to below characters. Choose city entrance. Apply. Now, new event page. Um, in the order of the event tabs, event tab number two takes higher presence over one. So, if the condition is true, in the second tab. The first tab will never be reached. So we can come in here and let's just do a generic transfer player to assault because at 12, this is going to be under, uh, under assault. So right there, looking left, fade normal, there. You also want it to play the little move sound effect. Play sound effect. Let's find move. Exactly what we want. So go ahead and apply that in there. 
I'm just going to test this out. Um, I'm just going to add a random um, debug right there. What I mean by debug is um, it's just it's not going to be the game. It's just for me to test. So build a character, player, touch. So basically, when I walk over that square right there, it'll set the main story to 12. Copy and paste these along. Let's give this a test. I already have a game saved, so I'll just continue from there. The glitchy save, but oh well. So, sorry about that. Um, so, bam, it should have activated. Oh, oh I'm sorry. now we can probably go in. Transfer didn't work. Oh, I know what happened. So obviously you saw something different happen there. But obviously you saw the character go over there. So we can remove these events because they're bugged. Come in here. Make this same as character so he'll walk to it but he won't walk over it. Over here. Below the characters. Player touch. Now it should work properly. This is where we get to play testing a lot. So, boom. Walk up here, you get your answer. And now we're in this map for the first time. It's a very large map, obviously. Not meant to make the player lost, but just to. I don't know why it made it so big, I just think it. I just felt like it should be. Make it seem like it's epic coming up here. And obviously, the, I need to fix that. Oh! And I also use this map for the new intro sequence. You need to see that. Um, at the very beginning of the video, I use this map as the main background. And I just kind of scrolled up it. Just come in here. It's actually the assault version of it. And it just went. And we came up here. So let me go ahead and fix that. I can use events to do this. Well, I'll do it for now. That's an easy way to do it. All I do is, when I did that, just control C1, use the arrow keys to control the placer, and control V to paste. So now you can't walk in that over anymore. So now, the fun part. The monsters. Now, I could have the monsters just place one right there. Graphic. Hmm. This be boring. You just get a slime. You know, I like that one. And have them just move randomly. Normal speed. High frequency. And you'll notice when we come onto the map. I'm a, I'm gonna make a new save inside of there. So much more efficient. Alright, so now we're in here. Let's find the slime. Boom, right here. Come back, slime! He's running randomly. And how it's gonna happen is when you collide with them, you can initiate battle. So they go me. I forgot to save, didn't I? Oh well. Start pos starting the position player. Boom, easy enough. So then, interaction button, player touch, contents. You want to battle process slime. And then after you're done battling the slime. No. Erase the event. The event will be erased so you come back to the map with that method. For now that'll should that'll suffice. So come here, slime. Boom. You can fight. And there's no background specified this map, so that's why it kind of looks all spirally. I made these fights much harder than in default. Damn. 
I think I'm gonna die. Holy crap, do I have any item? I didn't mean to... That's glitched. Well, boom. Died. But you see what happened. Um, ran into this slime. Boom, died. Poof. Um, but the slime just ran away. It went random. So what I want to do is make it so when the slime can see the player, the slime will follow the player. It'll approach them. Once they hit, boom, battle. But if he's walking to the left, obviously he won't be able to, the slime won't be able to see the player. If he's walking to the right, he won't be able to see there. But once he starts walking this way, boom, he can see him. But there's also a view limit. Like if it's four squares away, he can't see him. Like, but if he's like right there, yeah, right there, that's his maximum view. So he'll start following. Um, I made a tutorial about this in my blog. I'll link it in the description below. And I'll just move on from there. Um, let me go ahead and copy and paste the event in here and implement it into the slime, and I'll be right back. Alright, guys, I'm back. I just had to do my laundry real quick, and I also did the event. It's a pretty lengthy event, <laughs> to put it the least. Um, let me explain it for you. Here's the event. Um, if you look at the tutorial, I realize now that I messed up, there is a little bit of redundancy there. But I cleaned it up in this right here. Basically, I accidentally put this and this nested again inside of it, right down here. Which works. Highly redundant and makes it causes issues later on. Anyways, as I described in there, here's the face down. If the event is facing down, this is the code. It checks to see if the player is below the monster in the first place. So it's not, then it ignores the rest. If it is, then it goes and sets up the local coordinate variables. All it does is to make it from the top left as zero to the monster as zero. Zero, zero. Then it checks to see if the um, player is in a negative variable. If it is, switch it. With the X, it's potential. With the Y, it's not, but it's good to have there, just in case. Um, mainly when the player is above the monster, it will turn out to be a negative. But right here, you're switching. If it's negative, it switches it to a positive. That's all that does. And then it checks for the distance, sees if the um, players are then Y. Um, four spaces of the Y, or f within five, but if you're at five, it doesn't count. Um, and then it checks to see if the X, local X, is larger or smaller than the local Y. What that does is if the X is further from the, along the X and the Y, then it doesn't count. So this keeps his, keeps his field of view. It's kind of like a. Um, if you, if you see the um, lines I drew, then in the um, tutorial, you'll see how I d how I how I did it. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. I I can't find the good words for it, but it works. That's all that really matters. Then in here, it controls self switch. It controls self switch on, which then activates page two. Very simple event from here on. Um. It basically just follow how I said the move route to uh, move towards characters, skip if cannot uh, move. And once it touches, you battle three slimes. Once you're done, you've been erased. That part's simple. So, how I did the facing up is I just switched that. That's all you have to do is it checks if the player's above him. If he's above him, the absolute ver value right here will do the rest automatically. Um, when doing the facing left, just in the if statements, switch them around. That's all I gotta do. If the X is less than the event X, then he's seeing him on the left. And then conditional branch this, as I just switch, 
put um, x in of y, um, x is less than y. I mean, y is less than x. Um, that's all it is. That's all I got to do to switch. And then with the right, all you have to do is greater than. Right there. And that's how you do the rest of it. Control switch up, and everything else is all the same. Um, so let's test this out. Let's see how it works. I almost um, beat the slimes once, actually. By myself. I was quite impressed. One slime left, and I had one hit on him. See, he cannot see me, because he's not facing me. Once he turns left, boom. Combat. I should have been further away. That's it. Let's show it the... Let me try to be a further distance so you can see how it follows you. I know you want to turn right. Come on, Slimey. Slimey. Now he'll start following me once I'm in his field of view. And once he reaches me, it's combat time. Let me see if I can beat him this time. What? No damage. I'm dead. <laughs> they took no damage. I'm already over half dead. Ooh, one set. Have a chance. Have a chance. Die. I'm dead. So yeah, the combat's pretty hard. Um, it's designed that way. Um, before you have any combat, it's designed for you to have three people, three members in your party. Um, your little sister and your dog with you. And your sister can heal, so it may, more than makes up for it. So, how do we spread this all with monsters? Simple. Copy. Pace, new one, boom. We have another slime battle. So we just made this a living minefield for Damon here. He'll never make it through. Th th even if you have 99 potions, I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to make through this. Boom. So let's see how this works. I continue new game. Oh. Let's see if I could make it three with that combat. Probably make the time a little faster. Once you turn, though, you're in combat. And you know once you're in combat alone, you're dead. So, let me go and just remove all this random pasting I did. But you see where it comes now, it's just copy and paste once you get the initial setup. And that's just how I'm doing it. Um, you can do whatever you want. As I said, this is just making events. Ah, oh, shit. There. Okay. So, let's make the chase speed two times faster. That way, you won't be able to run forever. Eventually, the slimes will win. I always find that weird. Sometimes it just doesn't play test. New game. All right. Oh yeah, there's only one slime. Let me spam all the slimes. There's no way one of them cannot see me at some point in time. All right, let's try this out. Holy crap, they all just started bolting for me. <laughs> Even if I survive this battle, I'm instantly in another battle. There's no Megan out of here alive. Oh, that's awesome. I'm dead. So, that's how I'm doing most of my combat. Um, that's also showing my, um, how I do events. Um, some of you may have noticed in my combat, I removed, I changed the attack option. Um, instead of just plain old attacking, it brings up a menu with attack and your skills. How I did that, this is my only script edit I, I do, is under the script editor, where is it? Alright guys, I found it. It's under Window Actor Command. It's under Make Command List. I commented out the Add Attack Command. 
I found it useless. And you know, what? I'll actually remove the guard command. I find that useless too. So I, I I'm coming to those out. And under the database, under system, not system, terms, types, I made attack, magic, and special. Special, I'm probably not even going to use. But magic and attack. And I just made everything an attack. Like here's Damon's main attack. And then down here. Scarlet's main attack. They have their own attack um, skills. And their. Let me bring up combat real quick. Screw that. Let me go ahead and just. Battle test with the starting party. And so you start the game. Oh, when you do. Initially, do combat. Oh, Scarlet did a critical hit. And I'm probably trying to brush through that. Under attack, you get your attack, your physical attack skills. Magic, your magic skills. So do that. Scarlet gets heal. That's her beginner, one of her beginners, and regular attack. Buddy, I haven't made anything for him yet. I haven't decided yet. And that's how combat works. That works better for me than um if I'm bandana. Um bandana. Um <laughs> I find that better than the default system. Personal opinion, and that's all it is. Um make sure to like and subscribe and check out my newer videos. I uh, should be coming out with once a week. This one came out late due to different things at work and um, just having to test a bunch of different things out. But, yeah, like and subscribe. Enjoy.